Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is actually a quick revision series in embryology. Uh, I have already done a session on gametogenesis. Uh, these are not detailed sessions. For detailed sessions, please go and watch the topics which I have done uh, in my channel. Uh, this is just a quick, quick revision or we you can call it as a recap for your uh, UG as well as NEET preparation. Uh, so I will be just discussing about some of the important uh, MCQs as well in between. So today's session is on reproductive cycles. Uh, so let's begin the session. Uh, we know that uh, there are mainly two cycles occurring in the reproductive period. One is the menstrual cycle and the other one is the ovarian cycle. So the cyclical changes which happen in the uterine endometrium during the reproductive period that is what is meant by menstrual cycle and uh, the changes which occur for the ovarian follicles along with this you call it as the ovarian cycle. Uh, so it is the estrogen and progesterone by the ovarian follicle and the corpus luteum which uh, uh, makes the changes or the cyclical changes in the uterine endometrium and we know that uh, the menstrual cycle in a normal individual is roughly 28 day cycle uh, now uh, we we just mentioned about the ovarian cycle uh, the other cyclical changes in the ovary and it again persists throughout the reproductive period except during pregnancy once the lady gets pregnant during the pregnant period there won't be any ovulation so uh, during the, that period uh, the ovarian cycle uh, won't be there and it is said that it terminates uh, by menopause. And uh, have you heard about corpus luteum? It's very, very important. Uh, so the luteinizing hormone uh, will uh, result in secreting the lutein cells by its action on granulosa cells and theca interna. So these are the layers of the graphene follicle. So once the graphene follicle uh, liberates the secondary oocyte at the time of ovulation, the remaining part of the graphene follicle which is there in the ovary will get converted into corpus luteum by the action of luteinizing hormone. And we know that the corpus luteum, the growing follicle secrete estrogen and the corpus luteum in addition will secrete progesterone. And it is this progesterone which is needed uh, for the uh, for the changes which happens in the uterine endometrium or which makes the endometrium ready for the implantation of the embryo. Suppose what happens if there is no fertilization occurring, then this corpus luteum uh, will undergo uh, a fibrotic change and it will result in corpus albicans and as a result there will be withdrawal bleeding and menstruation. Suppose if pregnancy occurs, what happens? The corpus luteum will continue likewise till uh, say about 20 weeks of pregnancy and it will continue to secrete progesterone which is needed for the maintenance of pregnancy. So that is called corpus luteum of pregnancy. So corpus luteum of menstruation will be there uh, roughly for 14 days and it will just get degenerated into corpus albicans and menstruation occurs if there is no fertilization. If there is fertilization, the corpus luteum will continue as corpus luteum of pregnancy say up to 20 weeks of pregnancy. And this degeneration of corpus luteum into corpus albicans is actually prevented by a hormone known as human chorionic gonadotropin which is secreted by the syncytiotrophoblast of the blastocyst. So it is said if you want to uh, have an abortion, if you remove the corpus luteum of pregnancy before the fourth month. Uh, then it will result in abortion because uh, if you are removing the corpus luteum what happens is there is no longer a source of progesterone which is essential for maintaining pregnancy because uh, once the corpus luteum uh, degenerates after four months it is taken up by the placenta for the secretion of the progesterone. So till then corpus luteum is needed so if you are removing the corpus luteum before fourth month that will result in abortion. So let's have a quick recap. We know there is hypothalamus which is secreting the gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, and this acts on the pituitary gland, the adenohypophysis which secretes two major hormones, the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. Uh, we know the follicle stimulating hormone means it will act on the ovary 
and this will result in the maturation of the follicles by the term itself we know and the growing follicles will secrete the hormone estrogen which results in the proliferative phase of the uterine endometrium so mainly there are two phases for the endometrium that is the proliferative phase where the endometrium will proliferate and uh, the second phase is known as secretory phase where the spiral art uh, arteries will become coiled and towards the end if there is no fertilization uh, it will get shed off so uh, the proliferative phase of the uterine endometrium is may as by the uh, estrogen secreted by the growing follicles so the secretion of the fsh and its influence on the growing follicle this is known as follicular phase and this follicular phase actually is in is uh, actually parallelly uh, occurring with the proliferative phase of the uterine endometrium now the other hormone is luteinizing hormone uh, again secreted by the adenohypophysis it will act on the ovary especially on the graafian follicle which is there after ovulation and it will get converted into corpus luteum and what happens is the corpus luteum will secrete progesterone in addition to estrogen and this results in the secretory phase of the uterine endometrium so uh, the secretion of the luteinizing hormone and its effect on the ovary that is known as the luteal phase so the ovary has got a follicular phase which is controlled by the fsh and the luteal phase controlled by the lh the fsh the follicular phase is in correlation with the proliferative phase of the uterine endometrium and and the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle is in relation with the secretory phase of the uterine endometrium uh, so uh, we should know uh, actually uh, when this uh, luteal phase ends that is actually by the inhibin which is secreted by the granulosa cell so if there is no pregnancy occurring there will be secretion of the inhibin by the granulosa cells uh, on the adenohypophysis and there won't be liberation of the follicular stimulating fsh and the lh and that will result in menstruation uh, so this is hypothalamus this is pituitary gland this is fsh growth of follicle lh which results in ovulation so this is just a correlation of the events occurring we know that uh, the ovarian cycle is divided into the first half the follicular phase where you have the maturation of the follicles and ultimately it results in ovulation and the second half is known as luteal phase where you get the formation of corpus luteum so just before ovulation you can see the peaking of the lh and fsh lh surge that is what is meant by lh surge just before ovulation and now uh, let's see uh, the concentration of the estrogen and progesterone we know that during the follicular phase the follicles secrete estrogen that is the reason for one peak in the uh, follicular phase whereas in the luteal phase we know that in addition to estrogen the corpus luteum also secretes progesterone so that is the reason why in the luteal phase you have a peak of progesterone as well as a peak of estrogen so when you look the entire phase you can see two peaks of estrogen but there is only one peak of progesterone that is there in the luteal phase the reason is uh, the secretion of the progesterone by the corpus luteum and this is the endometrial cycle uh, actually the menstrual cycle there are mainly four phases that is proliferative phase secretory phase premenstrual phase and finally the menstrual phase so uh, we can start with day 1 of menstruation uh, and the first four days is they are actually known as menstrual cycle days then you have the proliferative phase up to 14 days and after that you have the secretory phase up to 26th day and from the 26th to 28th day you call it as premenstrual phase so but uh, when we uh, correlate it with the ovarian cycle we just consider the proliferative phase and secretory phase and we have already discussed that the proliferative phase corresponds to the follicular phase and this is actually under the influence of estrogen secreted by the maturing follicles and that will result in the proliferation of the endometrium and you can see the long uh, arteries and uh, there will be proliferation of the layers of the endometrium the stratum compactum and stratum spongiosum from the stratum basal layer.
and what happens in the secretory phases it is getting ready for the implantation uh, so we can see that the long arteries will become coiled spiral arteries and there will be increasing thickness and there will be arteriovenous anastomosis as well and if there is no uh, fertilization occurring what happens is there will be actually ischemic changes for the uh, functional layer and uh, because of the uh, lack of blood supply that part will get shed off in the premenstrual phase and ultimately it results in menstruation. So these are the changes occurring in the endometrial cycle. So all are effects of estrogen except secondary sexual characters, proliferation of the endometrium before ovulation, feedback inhibition of the FSH prevents expulsion of the ovum. So prevention of the expulsion of the fertilized ovum is actually that is the implantation is actually by the progesterone. Which phase belongs to ovarian cycle? Secretory cycle, premenstrual, menstrual all these are uh, changes in the menstrual cycle. So ovarian cycle consists of the follicular phase and luteal phase. Theca interna. So, theca externa, theca interna are the outer coverings of the graphene follicle. Theca interna is vascular and it produces estrogen. Theca externa is a fibrotic layer which consists of macrophages. The first polar body lies in which region? Is it between zona pellucida and corona radiata or between white line membrane and zona pellucida or within cell membrane or with, uh, outside the corona radiata? It is between the white line membrane of the secondary oocyte uh, and uh, the zona pellucida. So this region is known as perivitelline space. You have the secondary oocyte here and this is the expelled uh, first polar body after the first meiotic division and you have the zona pellucida. So between the zona pellucida and the white line membrane of the secondary oocyte, you call it as perivitelline space where you get the first polar body. So this is the first polar body. So uh, this is just a quick revision of the uh, reproductive cycles. Hope you uh, had a quick revision on the menstrual cycle and the ovarian cycle and how it is correlated in a nutshell. Uh, so the take home message is all change is hard at first, messy in the middle and gorgeous at the end. So even if you feel like it is hard in the beginning, work hard again harder, again harder until it becomes gorgeous at the end. So thank you. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and please share it with your friends.